The land of Lana has a rich history dating back 720 years. Throughout the centuries, there have been great moments in history and wealth in traditions and culture which have been passed down throughout the generations. One treasure which has led to great economic development and opportunities for new generations is the knowledge of handicrafts. This richness has led to Chiang Mai's continued fame, not only in Thailand, but internationally, as a world-renowned destination for handicraft. Because of the depth of the Buddhist faith in Lana, the world's first silver temple hall, exquisitely engraved in great details, not only on the building's exterior, but inside the structure as well, was built in the Lana style. The Sisu Pan Temple community is a tourist destination where visitors can still see silversmiths at work, showcasing their skills as they teach and train in the traditional arts passing on their knowledge to future generations. Only separated by a road from the Sri Supan Temple community is the Munsan Wualai Temple community. Both communities are famed for their knowledge of silversmith and are both of the Dai Lu ethnicity. Migrants who fled to Lana during the restoration age of Pajau Gawila when he created a renaissance following a period of decline. Both sides of Wualai Road are lined with silver shops, showing their wares from accessories to decorative and everyday items. In order to reinforce the importance of the skilled craftsmen of Wualai, the first Saturday walking street began on the 6th of November 2004. This weekly walking street offers a chance for the community to feature and sell their products and has now become an important weekly event not to be missed by the visitors to Chiang Mai. Amongst the famed 10 traditional crafts of the Lana people is the lacquerware, a craft passed down from the Taikun people whose technical and artistic skills were well known. The people of the ancient Si Pan Krua community still create spun bamboo products and lacquerware to today. It is believed that the Taikun people of Si Pan Krua community fled war torn Ken Dung, Mueang Sat, and Mueang Gai in Burma's Shan state. On arrival in Chiang Mai, the people met up under the great Bodhi tree in the middle of the village to share their belongings. Hence the name, Ban Si Pan Krua. The villagers of Ban Si Pan Krua are experts in all things bamboo. They turn a tube of bamboo into strips and coils and weave them into an assortment of utensils and household items, such as bowls, trays and souvenirs. The village has a learning centre for anyone interested in learning how to turn a bamboo coil into lacquerware. Apart from the Ban Si Pan Krua Learning Centre, Villagers have expertise and specialize in various skills from the creation of bamboo coil and spun bamboo to paintworks. While some specialize, others are known to have mastered the entire process. Every household welcomes visitors who are interested to watch the handicraft being made or those wanting to learn more about the skills involved. The Bumi Pond Dam in Thak province was Thailand's first hydroelectric power dam, built in 1964. An unforeseen effect from the construction of the dam was the flooding of the Ping and Had rivers. The overflow covered the flat plains flanking the rivers in Doi Tao and Hod district, creating a vast lake. This lake, in turn, has become a primary tourism destination in Doi Tao district. As a result, many villagers had to flee the flatlands to higher plains and resettled on the land provided for by the government. As they fled, 
many villagers had to leave their looms and blankets behind. From then on, the distinctive weaving design of the people in the area had been renamed the Flooding Pattern. Lovers and collectors of textile covet the flooding pattern because so many of the old pieces have been lost. Those remaining are rare and priceless treasures. The Pasin Din Jok or Sarong of Doi Dao are renowned for their intricate patterns which are very similar in design to those worn by the Lana royalty of old. The only difference is the Pasin Din Jok doesn't use silver or gold threads in the weaving. To revive the over 500 patterns of Doi Dao people, the villages had come together to create a knowledge center so that Doi Dao's Din Jok flooding pattern textiles can be a treasure for the Lana Kingdom for years to come. In the not too distant past, Nomadic slash and burn agriculture was the norm amongst ethnic communities in the northern mountains. The Hmong from Ban Ba Lek moved into an area of great deforestation, previously occupied by nomadic Galen people. The Hmong have worked towards the rejuvenation and reforestation of the forests able to create a balance with their own agricultural needs in accordance with the teaching of His Majesty the late King Bumibul Aduliadeh, Rama IX, who instructed Prince Bisadeh Rajani to help villagers before they damaged the forests and water resources even further. The people of Ban Hoi Luk therefore have made great strides in agriculture as well as in integrating the sufficient economy theory of His Majesty the late King into their daily lives. His Majesty's royal project not only helped support villages in agriculture, but also sought to support them in various other careers. In the past, villagers created handicrafts to be used in their daily lives, and the royal project has supported them in turning these skills into extra income, as well as teaching them new skills. They now create batik paintings, hill tribe dolls, sew handbags, and with the encouragement for villagers to wear traditional dress, they not only make extra income, but also preserve their culture for future generations. The success of Royal Project in helping hill tribe villagers improve their quality of life through agricultural income has led to a great increase in education, which in turn brings innovation and technology to be used in agriculture, in reforestation, and in the use of natural resources in a sustainable way. This is a complete and holistic growth which is sustainable. Handicraft skills passed down through the generations previously used to create day-to-day -day items have now been developed and improved into products proudly sold all over the world. Communities have benefited financially, export items that are competitive on an international market, and visitors are attracted to these skills. It is the cooperation of many groups, from villages to the government authorities and foundations, which have led to the assurance that these skills in handicraft will remain an integral part of our Lana culture for years to come. <laughs>